Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kai. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how I shot and edited this John Wick looking portrait that I shot yesterday with my brother. So with these two portraits, I didn't use any external light, meaning that I didn't set up my own light. I used any light that was available in that environment. There was one street light next to him and then there was this light right behind him. Now for the camera, I'm using a Sony Alpha 6600. I talked about this camera a million times on my channel. Although it is an APS-C sensor, I'm still really impressed by how well it performed in low light. The lens that I'm using is a Sigma 1.4 30mm DCDN and this lens is also meant for an APS-C sensor. I use this lens all the time for low light because of its very fast aperture is 1.4 and I actually made a review about this lens. You can check out the video right here. Now, in order for me to take these two portraits, I actually have a secret little weapon. That is a black promise type of filter that I made myself. So I bought this lens protection that only cost me $2 from the internet and I coated this lens protection with black and white spray paint. The effect that it gives is a very glowy highlight and faded shadow. And as you can see, it looks really good in these two portraits. If you want to know how I made this lens filter, you can check out the video that I made up here. Now enough with the shooting, let's go into the editing. So this is the first image and as you can see, it is really, really dark. But because of the filter, we do notice that there is slightly this glow that you can see around this light behind him. And with editing, we can really enhance that glowing later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is really increase the exposure a bit. So I'm going to put it to 45. This is something that I learned actually really recently, like a couple of months ago, actually. And what I do is I make sure the exposure is okay. And after I fix with the exposure, I don't touch other things. I go immediately to curve. And I'm going to talk about it a bit later. Okay, let's let me just fix the exposure first. I actually have my notes here. I don't want to experiment everything all again. So I put my highlight a bit lower to 83 because I, I kind of want to see the details in the light over here is a bit blown. So I'm going to put it to minus 83 and I'll remove the shadow also because I want more details and I'll add white. And the reason why I add white is I mentioned about this in previous video as well. It's like when you remove highlights and you add white or you remove shadow and you add black, you kind of like bringing back the details, but keeping the contrast at the same time. That's what it does. So you want it to have high contrast, but everything to have details at the same time. That's what you do. You remove the shadow and you add black, you remove the highlight and you add white. I'm not going to go too far with this one because I still want some part that you don't see any detail. I feel like that gives a really good mysterious feeling about it. And plus there's this glowy look. So I, I feel like there's enough textures in the image. You don't need that much more. Now, actually, I added this later on after I fixed everything, but I'm just going to add it now. I did add texture and clarity because it does seem a bit too like hazy. I added texture and I added clarity before I even touch texture and clarity. Usually I just go to curve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add contrast in RGB. I'm going to first do it with this main curve. I'm going to add some contrast. OK, I don't do it in basic. I do it here. Right, contrast. And then I'm going to fade the shadow and fade the highlight at the same time. OK. OK, so now we're going to look at before and after just to see this is before and after. There's already a huge difference, right? Before and after. Actually, the image already looked pretty good. But we're going to do more with it. So this thing that I learned, I go to red and I add contrast in the colors, but not too much, just a little bit. And maybe I fade it just a bit. OK, the result of this technique is that the color seemed to pop a bit more if I were to just add contrast normally. Some people might ask, like, why do you do this? I don't know why, but I just feel like the image color pops more when you play with contrast with the RGB. You don't have to do it, but I like to do it. And one thing that I do is usually I add curve for RGB, both RGB, but I wanted the image to look very like cold. So I didn't touch the blue. I added curve with the red and I added curve with the green going to fade the shadow and highlight just a bit. Now, the next thing that I do is I go to calibration. This is something I do it very often. Whenever I want to get like that teal look, I go to calibration. I go to blue primary and I bring it down. But I don't want to bring it down too much. Like I don't want that teal look to be too exaggerated. Some people do it like very, it's almost green. I don't like it anymore. Like I like this very rich blue that has a slightly touch of teal. Okay, usually the green and red primary, uh, I, I add this around the same amount because whenever I add different amount, it just the color looks very weird. So I, I like to add the same amount. And for the tint, the shadow tint, 
I'm gonna add just a bit more. And the reason why I do this is I kind of want the skin tone to not look like this. Okay, look, it's, the image look very noisy, but we're gonna fix that a bit later. So I don't want to add, I don't want this color of skin. I want it to look a bit more reddish. I feel like there's a better contrast when it look reddish. Okay, see? So now let's look at the before and after. Mm. Big difference in it. I'm gonna add some vignette in the image just so there's like a little bit of focus in the center, you know, so it looked dark. You know, this guy standing in the rain looks so cool. I'm not gonna add too much because I don't want it to be too exaggerated, but I do wanna see some, some vignetting. I'm gonna feather it. Okay, so here's my vignette. Whenever I wanna add vignette, I, I, I do this with the feather, so I know where it is. Okay, and I wanna feather it just enough. You can see the, the ground is very wet because it's a rainy day. Right, and I really like these type of texture, man. It looks beautiful, especially when you have a light behind him. It always reflects on the ground, so it, it really gives a really good depth, a really good dynamic in the image. You know, light here, light here, and the character is in the middle. Now, in the image, I think I did remove this little thing that you use to wrap the the umbrella around. You know, if you can remove it, if you want. I just don't. I didn't like it, so. I removed it in the image, it looked a bit distracting. But yeah, you can leave the image the way it is. That's about it. I'm not gonna edit the second image because that's pretty much the same way I did it. So yeah, that's about it with the video. Guys, let me know if you like these type of contents because if you do, I'm gonna make more of it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.